So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best outpost rush builds in New World. So for each and every single build I will explain what attributes and perks you want to have, then what gems and specific gear you want to use to get up to your stats as much damage as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then, moving over to the first build, which is the one and only Great Axe and Hatchet. And these are the attributes you want to have. And just so you would know, this is the best tank slash melee DPS build. And it is really good for PvP and even for PvE. So then, like you can see, you always want to split all of your attribute points to half. So put 50% into strength and 50 in constitution. And around level 60, you should have 200 strength and 200 constitution. And last but definitely not least, for your gear, you want to go with the full heavy armor and use a shield as well just to look cooler but of course it's not required and will not give you any extra stats or abilities so it's your own personal preference so then for our first weapon we have the great axe and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the reap and then get these two perks then afterwards unlock the second ability called the charge and then get these two perks then from here now let's move over to the other side and unlock all these three perks then lastly unlock the last third ability called the gravity well and then get these three perks and now from this point you're for free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next so then let's go over to the second weapon which is the hatchet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have so first of all you want to unlock this berserk ability with these two perks then afterwards unlock the second ability called the feral rush and then get these two perks then lastly unlock the last third ability with these two perks and now from here now let's take a closer look at the other side and unlock this one last perk and that's it. Now again from this point and onwards, you're for free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points. So then let's move over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best way to play this tank build and how to get out of your abilities the best possible results. So first things first, for your great axe Q ability we have the gravity well, which you can just aim and shoot. And if you hit the target in that electric storm, he will take damage and get stunned. Then the second ability is called the reap, which basically extends your axe for 5 meters. And if the enemy is running away, you can pull him back. And last Lastly we have the F ability called the charge and this is another dash ability which will deal damage and give you more mobility. And then going straight into the hatchet and when attacking an enemy it's super simple. You want to use your Q ability aka activate berserk mode and then keep on using auto attacks and use the R and F ability which are just simple damage spells. The best thing about berserk mode is that it will give you self healing and movement speed so you can use it to run away or run towards an enemy. And as this weapon is super simplistic and straightforward. The only thing that you need to know is that we have unlocked the throwing axe ability. So to escape enemy attacks you won't be able to block but instead use the heavy armor and dodge their incoming attacks or switch to the great axe and use the blocking system. But on the other hand now we can use the throwing axe which you can use to finish off players with low health. So this is how it works. You use the same mouse button that you would use for blocking so for me it's the right mouse button and then I aim it and shoot it with the left mouse button and that's it. Just of course keep in mind that every axe throw will consume your stamina so use it as much as you can but never get below 20% so then you would get it back up super quickly and then as far as your weapon combinations go when attacking a player first of all you want to use your great axe and activate the gravity well and then follow that up with the charge ability then when the enemy is about to run away use your reap ability and pull him back then now switch to the hatchet and activate berserk mode and keep on using normal auto attacks plus the R and F ability which we already looked into but they're just normal damage spells and last but definitely not least if you're fighting against a melee build then in between attacks remember to block so do one or two heavy attacks and then block in between and keep on doing that and when you fight against a ranged player try to run around and dodge his spells with the jumps and moving your character from one side to another by doing this you can still move forwards and attack a player but you make it a lot harder to hit you while you're closing the distance okay and now for my last and final conclusions for this build this hatchet and great axe weapon combination right now is super strong and as you're using a full heavy armor you can easily fight 3 or even 4 players just by yourself. And this build is so 
good that no matter if you have good or bad teammates, you can easily still kill multiple players by yourself and even hold points. And lastly, for your hatchet and great axe for PvP, you want to use the Opal gem. And then for all of your gear, get the Enix gems. So if you were looking to be super tanky and hard kill, but as well have the ability to do a bunch of damage as a solo player, then this is the build for you, so have fun. So then, moving over to the second build, which is the Musket and Rapier. And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, no matter from which level you start using this build, you want to get your dexterity to 150, or even 200, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 dexterity and 100 constitution. And then for your gear, you want to go with the light category. And the best setup is to use medium chest piece and then the rest light armor. And this will give you a 12.7 kilograms, which is the closest possible weight, just below the medium category. And I usually recommend for people to use the medium armor for PvP, but this musket build is meant for you to snipe players from a very far distance. So if you play this build right, you can get as much damage as possible with using the light armor. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the musket, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the power shot and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the shooter stance and then the next perk to that as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the last third ability called the stopping power and then the last perk to him as well. And now from this point you can spend your points in whatever order you like. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the rapier and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock right up from the start both these two abilities called the evade and repost. And then afterwards unlock both these two perks. Then lastly get the last third ability called the fleech. And now let's take a closer look at the left side and get all these three perks. And now from this point and onwards you're feel free to spend your points in whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all we have the musket and for your Q spell we have the ability called the power shot, which when activating overloads your musket with gunpowder, causing the next shot to deal a bunch of damage. And it's super good in removing someone's health to 60% just from one shot. Then the second ability is called the shooter stance, which when using your character enters a shooting stance, and all shots fired deal additional damage, and the reloading time of the musket is reduced by 70%. And then then for our last third ability we have a stopping power, which again overloads your gun with gunpowder, but this time when you shoot a target he gets staggered and knocked back for 3 meters. In my experience I focus mainly on spamming headshots and only really using charged shots if on a boss or in 50v50 wars. So then taking a closer look at the second weapon, which is the rapier, and the first Q spell is called the evade, which by activating makes you invulnerable for a split second. And it can be good in dodging enemy attacks but you have to know how to use it. So then we have the second ability called the repost and it is a reflect which means that when you activate it and if an enemy hits you he will reflect the incoming damage from you to him so if he does an f ability on you instead of you getting hit he will hit himself and lastly we have the f ability called the fleech which will deal damage and provide a small but nice mobility slash dash spell so the simple and straightforward way to attack a player is to use your musket and keep on headshotting the enemy from a distance i personally prefer to only use the musket abilities in group pvp or pve farming so just keep on spamming your musket auto attacks but then where the rapier comes in hand is usually you should be far away from the enemy but if you get caught or attacked by a player you want to switch to the rapier and use the fleech ability to create a bit more distance and in that time switch back to the musket and get one or two shots before the enemy gets back to you so then switch again to the rapier and use the repost ability to reflect the incoming damage and then lastly use the auto attack plus the evade ability and finish off the enemy you most importantly need to understand that as a musket player you want to have as much distance as possible from your enemies but when they get close to you you can either way run away using the fleech ability or perhaps use the repost ability and surprise the enemy by how much damage you can do in close range and with all this said now for my final conclusions for this build this musket and a rapier weapon combination makes this build a very good choice for outpost rush 50v50 wars and even in 1v1 open world pvp because not only you can snipe people but as well if you get attacked or challenged you can easily switch to the rapier and deal bunch of damage so then last but definitely not least for your gem choice for the musket and rapier you want to use the opal gem and for all of your gear rings amulets and everything else use the enix gems and that's about it 
And of course, remember to get that 15% increased damage 24 7, always keep on using your dodge rolls, so your stamina would not ever be at 100%, which will activate the Opal Gem. So, if you want to be a sniper in New World and use a very versatile build that is good for Outpost Rush, then this is the build for you, so enjoy! So then, moving over to the last and final build, which is the best healer slash paladin tank build. And for the weapons, you want to use the live staff and sword with shield. And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 250 focus and 150 constitution. And last but not the least, for your gear, you want to go with the full heavy armor and you have to use a shield as well. So then, moving over to the first weapon, which is the live staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the Sacred Ground. And then afterwards, unlock all these 5 perks. Then now, let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the Beacon. And then get these 2 perks. Then lastly, unlock the last third ability called the Light's Embrace. And then get these 2 perks. And now from this moment, you're feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. So then for our second weapon, we have the sword, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first things first, right off from the start, you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called the Leaping Strike. And then get these two perks. Now from here, let's move over to the other side and unlock the second ability called the Shield Rush and then get these four perks. And then lastly, unlock the last third ability called the Defiant Stance and then get these two perks. And now from this point, you're for free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all, you are a off tank slash off healer. And right now in the current stage of the game, it is used to capture points or just have the main role of standing in front of enemies. And they have no chance of killing you. So then for the life staff, your Q ability is called the Sacred Ground, which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in, and then cast it for a split second. Then the R ability is called the Light's Embrace, and it basically works the same way, just for a single target. And of course, you can heal yourself by holding the control button and activating the spell. And lastly, we have the F ability called the Beacon, which you can just aim and it places a huge healing on the ground. And if you target a player, you can attach the spell to him specifically. So instead of the circle being on the ground, it will be attached to a player, making the spell very useful in Outpost Rush. So then for our second weapon, we have the Sword, and the first Q spell is called the Leaping Strike which basically is a damage ability that makes you leap for 6 meters to the enemy. Then the second ability is called the Shield Rush, and the spell makes your character run very fast for 6 meters. And if you hit the target while running, he will get knocked back. And then our third ability is called the Defiant Stance, which you can just activate and for the next 8 seconds, your resistance is increased. So then as for the actual way to play this build, it does matter if you are by yourself in open world or in the outpost rush. Your main mission is to stay alive and be unkillable, while still annoying enemies and helping out your teammates with healing. So the way you want to play it is first of all use the sword and activate the leaping strike or the shield rush abilities whenever you want to attack an enemy. And always save your defiant stance ability on when the enemies are about to deal a lot of damage. And then as far as your healer spell combinations go, it is your own personal preference. But if you can and in the best case scenario, I always use beacon ability first and then the lights abrace ability. And this will increase your healing. And then if your teammates are grouped up and low health, use the sacred ground. And as the Light's Embrace ability has super low cooldowns, you can basically spam it every 2 seconds. And then lastly, don't forget to use the blocking system as well. So do 1 or 2 light attacks and then block in between. And while you have the blocking system activated, your movement speed will be increased. So don't forget to use it to your advantage. And now, in my final conclusions for this build. This life staff and sword with shield weapon combination is not meant to deal a lot of damage, but instead it's made to survive multiple players by yourself and still have the option to help out your teammates and deal decent amount of damage to the enemies. Right now the healing staff in general and heavy armor is broken, and it has way too much resistance and healing output capability. And then lastly, for your life staff you want to use the diamond gem, and then for your sword use the amber gem. And for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else, use the Enix gems. And when you're using the life staff, don't forget to always stay at 100% health. So then your diamond gem would be active 24-7 and your healing would be increased by 15%. So in a quick summary, if you're looking for the best build that players won't be able to kill you in, then this is the build for you. So enjoy. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good outpost rush builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. 
And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.